Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, in my opinion, and it's not based on a review of the contracts, it's just based on what life has taught me. The financial reports you're hearing about the Mayweather-Pacquiao fight are inaccurate, right? According to some reports, the upside on the fight is so great that Floyd Mayweather might make $180 million and Manny Pacquiao might make $100 million, right? That's what the reports are telling you. But let's take a step back and let's talk about our own common sense because, quite frankly, these two guys are operating different business models, right? Let's talk about Johnny Carson, who was the late night king. I mean, there was none higher in the United States. He was the late night king in the 1970s. The top, the top rum, the champ, right? Had the best ratings, was the man. And let's talk about him versus Merv Griffin. Right now, Merv Griffin had his own show. Merv Griffin wasn't as popular as Johnny Carson. He didn't draw Johnny's numbers, right? He wasn't as culturally relevant as Johnny Carson. You said Johnny Carson, you understood. Top dog late night. You said Merv Griffin, he looked like a face in the crowd. Right? Johnny Carson was the big celebrity. But understand that while Johnny Carson made millions, Merv Griffin made billions. Right? They were operating different models. Johnny Carson, for his entire career, according to reports, was an employee. Right? I know I'm sounding to entrepreneurs here like Robert Kiyosaki. Let's bring that mindset to boxing. The author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I encourage everyone to read his books. But let's just talk economics here. Johnny Carson, the king of late night, topped out at $14 million a year, which was big money back then. It's big money now. But understand the difference between the two men, and it's a profound difference, right? Johnny Carson worked for other people. So Johnny Carson was paid a salary. Merv Griffin owned his show. Right? When the show's being syndicated and stuff like that, it's Merv Griffin who is deciding who negotiates on his behalf. Right? This is why Oprah Winfrey is so successful. Right? She was an employee. Then she's out on a date with Roger Ebert. I'm not making this up. And Roger Ebert tells her, you know what? If you owned your show and then hired your distributor as just a distributor, you'd make a lot more money. That's what Oprah did. Now she has an empire. Right? Understand that Floyd Mayweather is Merv Griffin, right? Manny Pacquiao is Johnny Carson, right? Put differently, you know, Floyd Mayweather signs the front of checks. Manny Pacquiao signs the back of checks. They're very different, right? Very different. When you hear about Floyd Mayweather making $180 million, folks, Floyd might clear more than that, right? If this fight is as big globally as people think it's going to be, Mayweather, who hires the people around him, right? Mayweather, who owns the Mayweather gym, his training facility, he's not farming that out to third party people, right? He owns the Mayweather gym. He has his own promotional outfit. Understand, I know 
there are people here online who want to believe that Al Heyman, Mayweather's manager, controls boxing. No, just like Merv Griffin worked with other people, right? That's how Mayweather works with Al Heyman. Make no mistake, Al Heyman works for Mayweather with regard to Mayweather's career, not vice versa, right? So, just like Johnny Carson, Manny Pacquiao is more popular, right? Just understand, though, that when they cut the checks, Mayweather, like Merv Griffin, is going to get the bulk of the money, right? He's getting, literally, his check, and then Mayweather decides who gets paid what, right? With Manny Pacquiao, it's different. The people around Pacquiao, and this is the way boxing usually works. I'm not singling out Manny Pacquiao. This is the business model for most of boxing, right? Understand that Manny Pacquiao gets the check at the end of the process. In other words, the people around Pacquiao are taking a far bigger cut of the money designated for Manny Pacquiao than are the people around Floyd Mayweather, right? Mayweather is the one who is hiring people on a project-by-project project basis. Let's back up a little bit. One of the visionaries in the sport, in my opinion, was Richard Schaefer, who used to be the head honcho at Golden Boy while Oscar De La Hoya was taking a leave of absence for personal reasons. Right now what Schaefer would do is Schaefer would work with Mayweather on a project by project basis. So Mayweather would have a big fight. Understand what that means. Mayweather's getting the TV money. Right? People are hiring Mayweather's promotional group, then Mayweather would turn to Golden Boy and would hire Golden Boy just for that fight. So if Mayweather gets 10x, Mayweather would turn to Schaefer and Mayweather would say, hey, I'll pay you, let's say, 1x or 2x to promote this fight. And if the numbers matched up for Golden Boy, Right? If Schaefer thought, you know what? 2X isn't bad here. We get to raise brand equity, right? The Golden Boy promotional banner. By being associated with the world's best pound for pound fighter in a high profile event that fans of our craft, our sport, boxing, are going to watch. Right? So Schaefer would sign on for it. Mayweather wouldn't have long-term deals with Golden Boy. He was operating fight by fight, maximizing revenue. Now with Manny Pacquiao, it's different. Pacquiao has a promoter, right, who gets a cut, and it's significant, of Pacquiao's purses, and who has a say in who Pacquiao fights, right? Think about it. Understand with Mayweather, Mayweather decides who he fights. Understand Mayweather decides who promotes him, right? That's the Mayweather model. That's the Merv Griffin model, right? Let me say that's the Mark Cuban model. Go down the Forbes 400, and you're going to see a bunch of people who literally are the decision makers for their business entities. Could be a corporation, could be an LLC, could be incorporated, right? I'm just telling you, you know, we talk about what's happening behind the curtain. Understand Mayweather is behind the curtain in the back room making the decisions, 
Pacquiao, by contrast, like Ricky Burns in the UK apparently, is in front of the curtain. It's very different. Right? There's a DJ. Very popular. Uh, Don Imus. Right? He's, you know, in media on several different platforms. And he talks about how when he first started, right, doing radio, he was making a lot of money. The money was new. It surprised him. He delegated to people. He relied on people to do the accounting for him. Right? It turned out to be a mess. He had financial problems. He didn't know where the money was going. So then he decided that he needed to see every dollar. That he needed to be the person who was making the decisions and entering into the contracts. Right? He needed to be literally the CEO of his own life. Right? I would encourage people to research Don Imus. So, of course, Imus now knows where all the money is going and he's the one hiring people. He's not the star employee who is showing up and getting a check and who looks on the check and sees that taxes have been taken out. Then when their tax problems has to ask people, why do we have tax problems? I thought money's been taken out. No, he's the person who's literally organizing the deals on the front end. Right? In sum, don't confuse a company employee with the owner of the company. They're two different things things in the media when they tell you that one person's getting a hundred million dollars and the other person's getting a hundred and eighty million dollars use your common sense right if you're the employee of the company the money's trickling down to you your you know the company you work for I can't say your company the company you work for is getting paid the 100 million dollars right then of course the money trickles down to you so people are taking a cut your contracts tend to be long term right a lot of the risk is with your promoter who may have given you a signing bonus and money up front for a multi-year deal now that's very different than when you own the company and you're receiving a hundred and eighty million dollars right they give you the check right you're the owner you're the one who then tells the Leonard Ellerby's of the world you're the one who tells your employees what to do with the money Right? You're the one who is figuring out how to pay the taxes. Right? Understand, there's a downside to both models. Right? The downside with the employee is, in Johnny Carson's case, you top out at $14 million a year. Right? The problem with the Merv Griffin model is that you don't have the safety of you know some long-term contract with an employer there's no employer who's assuming the risk for you right you know you're the one where the buck stops if taxes aren't paid you can't blame your promoter right you can't blame people who you know got the money first because you're the one who got the money first, right? If there's a lawsuit, people aren't suing the company you work for. They're suing you because it's your company, right? There's financial uncertainty. Understand, I know Showtime had a multi fight deal with Floyd. That's how it's reported in the news. You and I know that if Floyd started losing the fringe contenders, options on that deal would not have been picked up 
those six fights would have been a much shorter deal would have become two or three fights right it's six fights if he keeps winning so there's bigger risk with owning the company but when the company has arrived when it's the top company in its practice right let's understand that percentage wise forget the numbers percentage wise Floyd Mayweather is gonna reap a bigger share of the profits than Manny Pacquiao is from this fight right if they got the same amount of money from this fight Floyd Mayweather because of his business model because it's Mayweather promotions right and he's not renting out his name because he's actually running the company right because Mayweather owns his business and owns his gym just understand that he is going to be able to receive and keep a bigger portion of the funds paid for this fight than is Manny Pacquiao right don't confuse a company employee with the owner of the company that's what the press is doing when the press says one side is getting X the other side is getting Y how could you say that when X doesn't own his own business right understand too if you dig deeper into this issue you're gonna find out what I've said for a long time right that um, there isn't a lot of money in boxing for most right there is for the top but not for most so you're gonna find out that fighters who were champions like Ricky Burns are looking at bankruptcy right and didn't have the control over their careers that they wanted to have right Joe Calzaghe retired unbeaten read Joe Calzaghe interviews Joe Calzaghe talks about wanting to have fought several people earlier in his career he wanted to fight Bernard Hopkins earlier in his career. He wanted to fight Roy Jones earlier in his career. Understand, Calzaghe was so motivated to fight these guys that he actually traveled to the United States to fight both. Think about that. Right? But he had a contract with the promoter. I won't name the promoter. And the promoter had certain control over Calzaghe's career. Understand the money went through the promoter right what I want people to do here too since we're the boxing hardcore here is research Rocky Marciano's career understand Marciano had such a bad business model right his promoter controlled his life to such an extent promoter and manager controlled his life to such an extent that Rocky Marciano started insisting that he be paid in cash for personal appearances after he retired he didn't want checks because he didn't want the financial trail because he knew if he received the check he would have to give some huge amount of it according to some reports as much as half of it to you know the people around him right he knew this that was the situation for him so he started going places and he started saying hey I'll appear here if I'm paid in cash because cash like dark coin cryptocurrency now dash right cash didn't leave the trail so Marciano was showing up places and later in his life according to those around him would sometimes have bags of cash I'm not kidding bags of cash on him now that's vastly different than if Marciano owns 
his financial destiny, owns his own company, isn't beholden to paying a huge percentage of his income to some manager or some promoter with whom he has a long-term deal, right? For those of you who follow the music industry, I encourage you to look at Elvis Presley's finances at the time of his death, right? Understand Elvis Presley, right, the king, had a net worth of less than $2 million at the time of his death and had to pay some huge percentage of his earnings to third parties, right? That's usually the model in boxing. My point to you in this video is that's not the Mayweather model, right? You need to think of Mayweather like you think of Mark Cuban, right? Mayweather is an entrepreneur right? Mike Tyson ran into financial difficulties. Let me leave you with this. Tyson ran into financial difficulties years ago. According to reports, right, Tyson was facing bankruptcy. People then started looking into Tyson's finances and found out that Tyson owed a limo company hundreds of thousands of dollars because every time Tyson was in some city, Tyson would get car service from some limo company and they would charge him huge amounts of money for the car service right so then of course a financial expert was pointing out the obvious that Tyson could have bought a limo and Tyson could have hired a full-time driver and had he bought the limo and hired a full-time driver for that city, Tyson would have paid less money, right? Think about it. My point to you is the way Mayweather has set up his business, he owns the limo, he has the driver. You understand, right? With Tyson, Tyson didn't know where the money was going, right? The people around him were spending money and had an interest obviously in making sure that Mike Tyson was as comfortable as possible. Right? That Tyson didn't have to ask too many questions. That to get from point A to point B, Mike Tyson had limo service. Right? So Tyson of course is thinking, okay great, I'm getting paid a lot of money. Right? This is a good situation. Understand had Tyson owned his own financial future, Tyson would have been saying to himself, what's the way to get from point A to point B with me retaining the most value, right? Is it better for me to be paying some local limo service than it is for me to buy a limo and employ a driver, right? Food for thought. So don't believe the hype here. Manny and Floyd have different business models, just like Johnny Carson had a different business model from Merv Griffin. Just like some of the hosts you see on television who are hired by the show have a different business model than Oprah Winfrey has for her empire where she owns the show. Let me close again by just pointing out that the name of Oprah Winfrey's company is OWN. You can view it two ways. Oprah Winfrey Network or his own. Floyd Mayweather owns his company. He's signing the front of checks not just the back of checks. It's a different business model than Manny Pacquiao's. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Let me point out too, the obvious. Right? The people around Mike Tyson, the people around anyone who are, you know, responsible for, you know, hiring limo companies and things like that, for 
fighters who are really, you know, employees of the conglomerate, right? They obviously have a vested interest in telling you that, oh no, you know, Mike has a lot of say in what's going on, right? You only find out the truth later when the fighter has tax problems, right? Or when the fighter files for bankruptcy, which has happened far too often in the sport of boxing to elite fighters, right? That's when you find out what was really going on, right? So, if you hear statements in the press about how things are structured and stuff like that, particularly for Manny Pacquiao, who has faced some tax challenges, right? After a career where he's made, you know, tens of millions of dollars, right? As you hear the comments, you need to just understand that different people around you have different agendas, right? The bottom line is just understand when you don't own the business and you're really an employee, right? Someone hires you and tells you, you know, you're an independent contractor, but they're calling all the shots, right? They're telling you who you're going to fight. Sometimes after fights, fighters will actually say in the post-fight interview, you know, I'm going to fight whoever so-and-so tells me to fight. Right? You know, I don't care who I fight. I leave that to my promoter and my manager. Right? That's how prevalent the business model is. Just understand it's not that way for everyone. I'm going to run and take this call. Thanks for indulging me. Let me hear your comments here in the comment section to this video.